Hey folks, Carl here from Make Your Models and welcome to this gas build for emodels.co.uk. emodels.co.uk Make something awesome. Okay, folks, so those lovely people over at emodels.co.uk have asked me to come along and do them a guest build. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Carl, as I said in the introduction. So, I've been doing YouTube videos since about 2017. Been making models since mid-2016. And here we are. So... When eModels asked me to make this, I was quite surprised, um, very honoured, very surprised. It took me a, a few moments, literally moments, to say I'd be more than honoured to, to come along and do this for them. Now, the next difficult part was actually deciding on what to build. So there was a lot of pondering, a lot of ifing and a lot of r in, a lot of conversations with a couple of the other guys that to do the builds. Um, on what to do and probably middle of last year I changed careers completely and I joined the Scottish Ambulance Service so I thought I'm going to do something that's relevant to my new career so I picked this out of the stash from emodels.co.uk and they have very very kindly sent me this long I'm going to keep it angled like this because if I Tilt it down, you're going to get the reflection from my overhead light. So, yes, ICM's Model T 1970 Ambulance Early Edition. This is model kit number 35665. You can see that in the corner there. And it's the World War I AAFS car. And it is the American Field Service. It's a wonderful looking little kit so there's not a huge amount to this box art not a lot at all really typical icm packaging there's a few little pictures here on this side of what it should look like i don't know whether i'm going to do this color then we will come into that when we look at our preparation work and what we do there so that is it nothing at all printed on the back then a typical icm boxing you get the nice beautiful cover like so and that is pretty much it because the rest is a nice plain white simple box with the kit inside it now there's not a huge amount to this kit which is a good thing but what there is to the kit is all very very nice now i've already been in and i've already removed the crinkle to get rid of that and there's literally five sprues to this kit. Three main sprues, which are these three here. One, two, three. Also in the kit are two clear part sprues. We're not gonna take these out of the bag because we want to protect them for as long as possible before we come to need to use them. So I'm gonna put these safe over here and out of the way. And then of course we get the destruction manual. So we'll get rid of this box, get it out of the way. So it's not in the way. We have our nice little manual, and somewhere in this manual is the decal sheet. And again, not a huge amount of decals, which is a good thing. I think there's three schemes in total. So we've got a choice of the three. We shall make that choice when we come down to the preparation, etc. etc. So we'll move these decal sheets again up here out of the way, nice and safe. So We'll take a look at the manual first. So again, we'll leave these sprues here, out of the way. In fact, I'm going to stand these up in my sprue holder, which is for the Hobby Zone sprue holder. Very, very useful piece of kit. I have two kits up in that holder at the moment. I shall maybe show you a picture of that if I take one. So, the manual. We have glossy outside, which is good. It protects the manual itself and then on the inside it is normal paper so as always normal manual we have all the sprues in the layout so we can see exactly what they are now usually when they highlight pieces of the sprue like this 
they are not used, they are the duplicate parts. And I think if we look at this closely enough, you, we do see two roofs. So there's a roof there and a roof there. So they are duplicated. So we will have a choice, hopefully. So yeah, those are the sprue layouts. And then we go into the build itself. And you can either follow these builds step by step by step, or you can go, right, okay, I don't want to build the engine yet. Let's get the chassis built up. So me personally, I like to start from the very beginning, build it up, and then keep as much of the model separate as possible for painting. So this is part of the preparation work of when you look at the model. The first thing to do is have a good look at the manual, see the build process, decide what parts you want to build and what part of modules you want to keep that in for painting. So looking at this, we are probably going to be building the engine, keeping that separate. We will then build the chassis, keep that separate from the engine. We will then probably build up the wheels again and keep those wheels separate completely. We will then, because after we built the chassis, got the wheels on, well, we're not going to put the wheels on, but you know what I mean. You then start building the box part, the back part of the ambulance, which is this part here, that's awfully shiny, which is this part, the main cab where the injured or the sick will be carried, which is this part. And again, we will build this up and keep this separate. We've got a few things we are going to be doing with this part, which we will come into when we get into the painting. So personally, I'm going to build this, keep that separate. So that's three parts so far. And then we've got the engine covers and all the boxes for the tools and medical supplies. The roof, again, be kept separate, painted separate. The stretchers and some of the other little bits and pieces, again, these small parts like the the uh, tarpaulin rolls and stuff like that, all be kept separate, painted separate. We have the lights, the clear parts of the lights, which are, of course will go on at the very, very end. So by the looks of it, not a huge amount to put together either. Well, there is only three sprues. so. The build process should be relatively quick, simple, and easy. Uh, nice looking mine, just beautifully drawn out uh, sketches. Yeah, a lot better than some kits that I've recently done. Much, much nicer. So, that's the destruction manual. Very, very basic, but nice and easy, simple build. Should not be too difficult. And then right on the back of the manual, we have the three different layouts for the decals. So we'll have a good look at that once we come into painting and all the rest of it. I won't make the decision yet because I say, okay, I'm going to do this one 20 minutes later. I've changed my mind. Right at the front of the manual, we also have the color colors. We've got Rebel colors and Tamiya colors. I mostly use Tamiya, so I will be using these Tamiya colours. That is, of course, if I go for this colour layout, which I think I probably will. I'm going to keep it as close to the box art as possible. Of course, and then we're going to weather it all up at the end of the process. So, yeah, that is the manual. So we will move this up and out of the way. Where can we put this? We will put it in our sprue rack. So the sprues, we've already seen the clear spot. So we now have sprue A, which is the main sprue. So on here we have part of the cabin. We've got the front fenders for the front wheels. We've got one of the roofs. So we've got the choice of that roof there and there's another roof on one of the others. We've got one of the spare wheels here, I think. Or well, actually, that's just the tyre. There's no wheel in there. And some of the storage boxes. We've got the stretcher. And some of the cab here. So yeah, looking at the plastic, I can see on this one, I can't see any sort of flash or anything. It looks like all the injection pin marks are on the inside parts 
of the kit, which is nice. It saves us some clean up and clear up. So yeah, sprue A. Very nice, very sharp bits of plastic, so. Sprue B. Sprue B, a little bit smaller, but we do have the four main wheels, steering wheels there, the front part of the engine is there, our engine mounts, which we may very well have open, so there's gonna be some cutting and chopping going on there. We've got a lot of uh, buckles and stuff here, which I can see a little bit of flash on there. Not a huge amount, tiny little bit. Should not take too much to clear up. So yeah, and lots of little bits, I do not know what they are. <laughs> so I'm sure once we come into the instructions, we will know exactly what they are. We've got some lights here. Looks like these look like a fuel tank. Yeah, lots and lots of bit, little bits. And again, all the injection pin marks are on the inside parts of the mold. So very nice, very nice indeed. That is sprue B. So finally, I thought this was sprue C, but it's not. Sprue C is one of the clears. This is sprue D. So on here we have the other roof the other front part of the cabin. I think the difference is this one is a solid, supposed to be a solid metal sheet. Whereas the other one, you can actually put a windscreen in it. So you have some more of the, the back cabin, the two main spare wheels, and no idea what those are. Absolutely none whatsoever. So yeah, and I didn't see any of the engine parts, but that's not, uh, they're on there somewhere. Again, all the injection pin marks are on the inside pieces. So very, very nice. Very, very sharp. Like I say, the only bits of flash I've seen are on those buckles, which were on sprue B. And again, it was very, very minimal. Very minimal indeed. So a very nice looking kit. And that is sprue D. So that is a take, we've taken a look at the manual, we've taken a look at the box art, we've taken a look at the sprues. Next, we're going to have a chat about preparation. Emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Okay, folks, so preparation. What do we do? A lot of people will spend a good bit of time looking for reference images, pictures. I have a tendency not to do that. I'll take a quick look, but I won't dig very, very deep. So as I stated, I will spend a little bit of time in the instructions, looking at each section that I can keep separate to paint separately. So I'll take a good long look through these and I'm starting to get ideas of what I want to do. So like I said, when we were looking at this, I shall build the engine keep that separate. I'll build most of the chassis up, keep that separate as well. The wheels will be kept off and painted separately. And like I said, the main part of the cabin, for the transportation of patients and things like that, I probably will paint the interior. And we'll have a look at that when we come to do it. But I will go to build this part up here well, this part here, I'm not, I won't attach it to any of the base or anything, I don't think. And we'll paint that separate. We've got a few plans and ideas of what I want to do with that. So, yeah. And I think I am going to try and open up one of these so we can have it raised and folded in. So we can actually have a look and see the inside of the engine as well. So that's probably the main part of the preparation I do. Well, the first part of the preparation that I do is have a good read through the manual, front to back, several times, because it's always good to know exactly where you're going and what you're doing. And it is, I always build in a modular basis and keep as much of it as separate as I can to paint. Some things don't allow you to do that. Um, I'm currently building 
the one ninth scale um, BMW from Italeri with sidecar. Now this has got to go, the way that this goes together, it has to be built as one piece and then it will be sprayed and each individual part will be painted separately. So things like this, some things you can't do it modular. Most things you can, but there are occasional things that you can't. So good look through the manual, read it several times, decide how you're gonna build it and what you can keep separate the more you can keep separate the easier it is to paint so we shall put these to one side next no we're going to keep it here actually next take a look at what paints you're going to use decide am i following what's on the box sometimes you'll get several paint options have a look have an idea of what you are going to paint i usually make one decision if there's multiple choices i'll make one decision and then halfway through the build i'll change my mind usually but with this we are going to follow this paint scheme as much as we can so it's then a matter of checking do i have these paints available the best time to look for that is now so the main body of the tank is like an intermediate blue it's xf25 or revel 179 and we do have a pot of XF25 ready and available. And then for some of the things we want to do, they aren't on the color call out. So we're gonna be want wanting some wood colors. So we do have wood colors. And then we're gonna be wanting some silvers and some irons for all the other little bits and pieces here. So we're gonna want some flat whites, some gloss white if we've got it. So we've got those up on the shelves and we've got some XF65, which is is that on here? No, that's a field grey. So I've, I've got a feeling I'm going to be using some field grey in this, but I don't know where yet. And then we've got some titanium silver. Um, so here's asking for like chrome silver and steel. Uh, we've got a wooden deck tan as well. So decide what your colours you're going to paint, which of these on here you have and which you don't have. And if you don't have them, order them now so you've got them ready for when you need them so that is that next what else are we going to do well how are we going to weather this what we're going to make it look like is it going to be nice clean and shiny we've got our paints and we've got our colors so we've got our base colors for the most part there will be some other bits and pieces to go in these colors as well so what else are we going to do so we're going to want to do some sort of weathering now are we going to have it in the field or we're we going to have it in the streets so i am going to have it so it's coming from the streets, from, sorry, we're from the fields into the streets. So we're gonna want a little bit of mud. So we are going to be using the AK mud effects. So there are three different colors in here, as you can see, to give us three different effects all at once on the same vehicle. So we're gonna have a play with these, see what they're like. And of course, these are all available at emodels.co.uk. We have all of these mud effects. We have earth effects is one of them and we also have a dark mud and a fresh mud so we've got three different shades of mud that we can play with to get that wet and dry look on this ambulance uh, and then you have to think what else are we going to do to do some weathering on this so i said i'm going to do something with this cab so we are going to be implementing some of the ak effects AK worn effects fluid on this main cabin. So we'll see what we're going to be doing with this later on. And that is pretty much all I do for my preparation. And then of course, do I have the right tools for the job? So we are going to want things like cutters. We have our cutters. An assortment of tweezers, both like this and reverse tweezers for holding parts while we're gluing or painting or doing what it is we need to do. Um, Stanley knives, in case we need to cut something. Spare blades, maybe even the use of a saw if need be. You know, make sure you've got all these tools and have an idea of what it is that you're gonna do. 
make sure you've got everything you need. What else are we going to need? We, so we've got cutters, we've got blades, tweezers, we're going to need glue. So we've got, we're going to be using for the most part Tamiya Extra Thin. And of course there is also possibility we may need some super glue. Make sure we've got a little bit of super glue. And, and then probably some oil effects. So things like the Abtilung, this one is actually Starship Filth, probably one of the rarest uh, oils out there. But you know, having got all these things, what am I going to want to use and how am I going to use it? Um, are we going to be wanting to use some um, pigments and things like that? Have a think. Think about what it is that you're going to be doing. And if you don't have them, get them ordered up. And of course, sanding sticks, all that kind of stuff. So that is how I prepare. So a quick review. We look through the manual several times to see how the build goes, what modular parts we can do. We take a look at the color schemes that are available, or do we want to do our own? We take a look at the color callouts. Do we have the, all these paints? Is there any paints that we don't that we want to use that we don't have? Get them ordered now so they're ready and arrive when you get to that point. Because there's nothing worse than building it, getting it ready. You've done all the hard work of putting it together. And I said, yes, we're into paint. We're going to get some paint on this, and you don't have it. Oh dear, what do we do now? We order it and we wait. And I find sometimes that uh, can destroy the mojo a little bit because you, you're all excited and you just let down like a big bag of wind. So, so that is how I do my preparation. Get my colors, what effects am I gonna do? What weather and effects am I gonna do? Am I going to be doing a dio? I am gonna put this on a little very, very basic and very, very simple diorama. Cheap and cheerful picture frame. How are we gonna fill that picture frame? What are we gonna use as a base for building it up? Things like that. We'll show you when we get to it. So this is episode one of ICM's Ford T1917 ambulance. That is, a, we've taken a look in the box, see what there is. We've taken a look of how we're gonna build it, what we're gonna do. So next, we are going to get on to the build itself. So episode two, we'll be putting it all together. So I am going to say, thank you very much for watching. Be good, be safe. And as always, keep making models. And don't forget, emodels.co.uk for all your modeling needs. We shall see you next time. Ta-ta. emodels.co.uk, make something awesome.